Hey everybody, it's Alexander A. Manzoni, and today I'm going to be reading some American Carnage, okay. Chapter 4, Yuda Proliferates Propaganda for the Government. Freedom Alliance Graphics Company, Market Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, RSA. Friday, January 18th, 2092. I don't think I could take it anymore. Frustrated, Yuta momentarily pulled back from her work. She had spent the last 18 hours churning out objectively objectionable material for President Eagleman's newest campaign of expansive public disinformation. As far as the material went, there wasn't really much to speak of uh, that was new and original per se. In actuality, it was, for the most part, repurposed crap that could have very well have been used to simultaneously wallpaper Hitler and Stalin's bathrooms. The ideology was different, but in the end, the effect was the same. Misery and death. For everyone, except for those at the very top 0.1%, of the societal chain, and uh, perhaps needless to say, but Yuda Lacrimosa was not in that apex bracket. She was forever in danger of being downsized, which was usually the beginning of the ever so slippery slope to the forced labor camps. Such was the plight of being stuck in the middle class, which amounted to only 14% of the American public. You weren't as expendable as the lower class, but you were still very, very much expendable to the top 0.5%. Anytime somebody needed to be blamed for something, it would be thrown under the bus. An upper class would choose one under their own employee, often through threats of employment termination, to take responsibility for a staggeringly wide range of offenses to society and humanity. As a whole, Yuta's office had experienced a boom period of increased growth since the new Republican Sands Laptop Administration took over. Van, Van Scooney and his liberal Democrats, they had little need for such endeavors that Yuta's organization catered to. The pamphlets, posters, both motivational as well as the ones that were terrifying to behold. Wasteful, loosely handouts by the millions. The liberal Democrats didn't have much of an agenda themselves to push, except for uh, less robots in Congress. Maybe that was one reason why they lost so badly during the past two quadrennial election cycles. You'd have felt increasingly pressured by the representatives of this new government. They would not take no for an answer. Not for anything. They held a fondness for hiring contractors uh, to sustain a federal hiring freeze that had been in place since the 2080s. They held no qualms about replacing anybody they thought to be contradictory to their own belief system. By replacing, they would literally replace them with a made-up government-issue robot. And even though that person would very clearly become a robot overnight, nobody would ever admit that such a deed had taken place. What happened to those who had been replaced was determined by the nature of their crimes against the system. The only thing that mattered was that those individuals were never seen again by their loved ones. The worst were taken to Guantanamo Tower, while the others were dispersed through a network of political work camp prisons, often unsubtly disguised as legitimate industry. Yuta was one of those so contracted. In this respect, she was luckier and living in much better conditions than most. Mm, looks adequate. Mm, said a voice over Yuta's shoulder. It was her manager, Constantina, looking over the contents of Yuta's computer screen. Adequately adequate? Oh, yes. 
I dare say that this piece is extremely adequate. I particularly enjoy the line work of this piece. It really makes the evil in those ignorance pop. Kind of makes you reel back in terror, doesn't it? That's why it pops. It'll give the children nightmares. I shudder to think that what they'll be thinking, all oh, those young minds, they are so, so malleable. Ah, <laughs> excuse me, I get a bit caught up in the process of shaping public opinion. Good work, Yoda. You always do good work for the company. Yes, I live merely to serve our government and our Republican leader-in-chief. Oh, say can you be. Ha, ha, yes, you get the idea. Not like some people I know around here that Nathan, well, you didn't hear this from me, but I got word that he's on the chopping block sometime very soon. Bye-bye, Nathan, said Yuda, adding a shrill, awkward laugh to make her enthusiasm seem more authentic. Authenticity was key. Yeah, I already received the paperwork. He's basically already gone. Nate, <laughs> who? <laughs> oh, exactly, Nate, who? Nate, who? Yes, no, really, you'd do well to begin forgetting him as soon as possible. Scrub him from your contacts. It'll save time later. Especially if there happens to be a big push about to come on. I will make it a point to make a point of doing so. Excellent, Patriot. Carry on until your designated breakaway period of idleness and presumptive dietary consumption. Constantina awkwardly patted her employee on the right shoulder before turning away and exiting the small office to evaluate the other's progress. Thank you very much.